I'd like to thank On Any Moto for allowing me to take this beautiful Envy Augusta F3 out today. They are my local and go-to shop for damn near everything for my motorcycles because they have everything and can get damn near anything. And on top of that, they're just great people. So if you're in town in Tucson, Southern Arizona, Arizona in general, a different state, swing down to Tucson and check them out. Uh, what is going on YouTube? One on the X-Ram. Today is round two for the F3 MV Augusta ride. Well, because dummy me decided to reroute my cables after I got into the dealership and didn't plug it in all the way. And so all of my audio from the last ride was garbage. So hopefully I can remember a little bit of what I talked about last time. I will say this, the startup procedure is interesting. Apparently, you need to be in neutral with your clutch pulled in and your kicks in down to start it. Or something, a combination of those things, which is very strange. Anyways, as I said in my last video, the sitting position of this is very comfortable, especially for the type of sport bike that it is. I did look up a few numbers on this motorcycle. None of it had to deal with the torque or horsepower or anything like that. What I looked up was seat height. And I felt this bike was lower than most of the other sport bikes, like this 959 beside me. And I was right, the seat is actually 31.6 inches. So that's a good inch or so shorter than my 12, a 99, and the V4. So if you're a little bit shorter, this bike is definitely for you. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> so this bike has an auto blipper and quick shifter that work pretty damn good. Uh, the thing that to note about it though is that at low RPM, the quick shifter is actually kind of clunky. You need it needs this bike needs high revs for the quick shifter to really work. It, you you feel like you have to use a clutch at a lower RPM, which isn't a bad thing. It's just in comparison to other ones, it's definitely clunky and not as smooth as its competition. The mirrors <laughs> are like little Yoda ears. They're they're too low. To really be able to see them, you'd have to come back here and down in order to actually look through your freaking mirrors because of how low these things are. So you're kind of looking at the top of the frame of the mirror. That being said, if you can actually go bend down to look at them, they don't vibrate like crazy like the Ducatis do. So they function well. You just have to be able to get down to look at them. So the power delivery is three cylinder is a little lacking in the low RPM, but not a lot. But as you build up revs, this three cylinder really starts to scream and it's beautiful. Get Bertie. Ah, gotta listen to that thing go. So between this bike and that bike, I would say this bike is much nicer to ride. <laughs> oh, I love that hill. This bike is much nicer and more smooth to ride than the 959. It might be down on power in comparison by a, a little bit because again, it's a 959 and this is an 800 cc. So, although I don't think it's actually 9, 959 cc, it's definitely lower than that. But despite that lack of power in comparison, it's definitely not slow by any means. Oh, God, yeah. 
That was nice. The rear brake is kind of mushy. <laughs> Doesn't feel like it works very well. As I'm saying, as the rev build, the bike gets smoother and smoother. The front brakes are very good. And that's what I like about this gearbox. It's just you got to get it screaming in order for it to really take hold and be the monster that it is. You really let this three cylinder scream. But the front brakes on this are great. They're very powerful. They got a ton of bite to them. They're the way that I like them to be, where you initially touch them and they just want to grab. A lot of people don't like that. The brakes do have a progressive feel to them, but there's a really good initial bite to them. And I like that. I don't like it when I start to grab the brakes. That doesn't actually do anything. I need it to have that bite right away. It gives me that confidence that it's going to slow down like I need it to. Oh, man. This bike feels like it's 200 pounds lighter than, than any of my Ducatis. It's what it feels like. Apparently the three cylinder has a counter rotating crank. Don't call me on that. Definitely go look that information up, but I feel like that uh, helps with the turn in of this bike or the tip in of the bike. But the cool thing is with this motor at six gear, you can cruise. And that's one of the things I bring up in a lot of my videos is whether or not you can cruise in six gear. Because for me, I ride a lot of these bikes mostly on the road, which means that which means that I will be riding normal speeds and to have to consistently shift is kind of annoying. So to be able to have it in six gear and just kind of cruise uh, through normal city speeds is a, is a very good thing. It, it makes it, I want to say commuter, but it helps it be a commuter if you want to use it that way. One other little tidbit about this bike is it is about 100 degrees outside and I am not hot on it which is a change for me because the bike that Mr. Hep 520 is on the 959 it gets hot my 1299 gets very hot the V4 gets pretty hot this I feel no heat the exhaust is right behind my heel my right heel and it's just not hot the bike the engine nothing's burning me up so it's another really great point about this machine interesting note about the turn signals is that when you turn them on they don't do a left or a right they do as if you're having a hazard signal if you can see it so it's kind of odd because you're not expecting it to give that symbol you think you're turning on your hazards and it may be just it's a little misleading it's a little misleading to you god the power of this thing though it, i was talking about the bike that this motor actually comes from the uh 800 Brutale RR I'm sure I butchered that name and that bike feels totally different than this bike despite having the same power plant and it's because it's because of the the frame of this motorcycle it has more weight over the front end and one of the things about the Brutale was that it was very really happy uh, like that bike itself was a huge was a massive hooligan machine you'd be a complete root asshole on it meaning you'd do wheelies and everything else it was a super it was a super fun bike don't get me wrong but you put that same motor in this chassis lean forward you have an incredibly nimble and quick motorcycle like i was describing hefts a Z800 being quick as opposed to fast this bike is very 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 quick and if wherever you point the nose is where it's going to go which is great obviously 
and it's just so effortless to, to just turn it put it into a turn you don't need to do much with it just kind of put a shoulder down a little bit and go it's a little push on the bar and you're in and like i said this bike feels hundreds of pounds lighter than what it probably actually is Yeah, the turn-in is almost surprising to me sometimes because I'm used to the way my bikes handle and turn in and while they are also really easy this is even easier <laughs> so for those of you that are looking for a step up from a 600 or even like a 650 like sport touring type bike you want a little faster but you're not quite up to a thousand cc Check out NV Augusta F3800s. The power is incredible. It's linear, it's easy to use. It's, I almost went off on this turn again. It's not punch you in the gut power. It's, it definitely has some grunt to it. And an NV, much like Aprilia, much like Ducati, they all have a personality to them. They all have a characteristic about them that makes these bikes unique and honestly it's a beautiful bike envies make some gorgeous machines if there's decent electronics on it tracks control abs it can do change your engine mapping a little bit so i mean there is some tech on this is it the best no envy is kind of a little bit behind but it doesn't change the drama that you experience when you ride these bikes they really are something you have to experience to really understand it certainly don't turn your noses up at them to me they're a little more unique than a number ducati i think they are so to own one you'd be one of few around you you'd have to be especially if you don't have a dealership close to you that's kind of one of the bigger problems with mvs is not a ton of dealerships have them which means that you're kind of SOL if you, you know, like buy a secondhand one or something like that. You have to deal with whatever dealership you have around you. If they don't service MVs, then you're kind of screwed. Not sure what that was about. just turns in so easily so with that i hope you guys enjoy this video i hope you guys kind of got a little more insight on to this motorcycle here there's a ton of little name max that i'm just not going to go over i feel that you should kind of experience it for yourselves take it from me it's it is every bit of a sport bike <laughs> guys have fun it's every bit of a sport bike and then some Hope you guys liked the video. If you did, hit the like button. If you liked it, hit subscribe. If you didn't like it, subscribe anyways. There's always something interesting coming out. And I say always, it's sporadic. Who knows when it's gonna come out. So I'll keep you on the edge of your seat. You all have a good one.